hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Today I'm spending some time with state game warden Jacob Harriet. Now our game wardens are a very special breed of law enforcement officers. Except on rare occasions, they spend all their time alone and in rural parts of the state. So Jacob, what kind of things you think we could get into today? Well, this time of year, my primary goal during deer season is to check hunters in the field, but you just never know what's gonna happen. Uh, my phone's ringing constantly this time of year, and it could be anything from a, you know, a simple uh, regulation question or somebody that has a trespasser on their property that I need to go take care of. And also work very closely with my county, and if they have a serious call, like a violent domestic or some sort of manhunt, I try to help them out as much as I can. And then uh, also, you know, something simple, like somebody getting turned around in the woods, we go and try to help them out and you just never know what's gonna happen. Well, we're very thankful for you, Jacob, and all your fellow officers. A wildlife department that's prepared for anything you could possibly dream of. Just another reason to love Oklahoma and the adventures that await you. If the dog barks, I start smiling. Yeah, me too. And the more they, they bark, the more I smile. It's kind of like music to me. You know, each dog's got a personality, really. Uh, I guess it's not a personality. I guess it's a doganality. And they're individuals, and, and they act individually. But then when they, uh, they kind of like a common goal, and out here it's a rabbit. And so they work together uh, as, a at, team. as a team. After they once get on that rabbit, then they'll work together as a team and, and like bird dogs honor each other, rabbit dogs honor each other. Uh, if a dog is reliable, those other dogs knows he's reliable. When he barks, if there's a rabbit there, those other dogs know that. And likewise, when a dog barks a lot and there sometimes there isn't a rabbit there, those dogs will get to recognize that too and, and they, they won't respond as quickly. But uh, we work these dogs together for a few years now and uh, they work good together as a team. Yeah. Well, some of them have a chop mouth, which is a, a short, you know, a Give short bark. Yeah. It's, it's a chop. And some of them have a ball, uh, which is a long drawn out. Uh, and we've got some of both of those. And then we've got a squall or two. If we ever get it going here directly, well, you'll hear them all. And some sound like a, a rooster crowing that doesn't really have uh, any, any other comparison to it other than a rooster crowing. But each of them has their own sounds. And if one of them hits a really fresh trail and barks, the others will respond to that knowing they work together in teamwork and they combine to make a pack. And then the whole pack will get, go to that trail. And if they lose it, then when the first one that hits it again, the others will rally to that dog and join together to, to uh, chase the rabbit. I think they're going to get it going. Let's well, ease on down just a little bit further. I think they're going to finally get this thing going. When the dogs begin to scent a rabbit, some of the, do the dogs with a really good nose can smell a rabbit that may have been there several hours before. And as that barking increases, to a certain point, they will track the rabbit down to his daytime bed and move that rabbit. And that rabbit is like any person would logically do after being run out of his bed, would make an, a circle around, hope to outrun the dogs and come back to his bed, hope the dogs won't follow him. But it's somewhat an elliptical or circular path, most normally, that they run in. And we look for an opening somewhere between where the dogs started the rabbit and uh, where we think the rabbit will come back to his home range and wait for the rabbit to come by. Usually the rabbit's quite a few minutes ahead of the dogs and takes his time 
And instead of running, you hear the dogs running, you think they're like a fire been going to a fire in a fire truck. The dogs running fast, but the rabbits just hop, 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 hopping along. Tell them about he licking his paw. And every now and then, the rabbit stop, he'll take a paw, <laughs> lick all the moisture off of it. <laughs> like so. They do that. They do that. I've seen them do that. I wouldn't make it up. I've seen enough rabbits to know that it looks like, I'm not saying it does, but it looks like they kind of enjoy it. It's, it's hard to know what a rabbit's going to do. Yeah, they generally do make some kind of a rough circle. These swamp rabbits, if you're running swamp rabbits, they'll run a circle uh, up to, you know, half, three quarters of a mile. Might be, like Joe said, an elliptical kind of a circle. And a lot of times they'll go down to the end and make a, some small circles and then line back out and come back to you. You just have to guess. You just, really, you just have to guess. If, you can, if those dogs can stay on him long enough, He'll do the same thing three or four times if they can stay with him. And that's what we're looking for here. If they can stay with him, I think he'll be back here because he's been here about three times. Here comes the rabbit. Here he comes. Got him. Got him then you Joe. I got him. You know, I've been knowing Joe since 1988. And uh, when I met him, he was a game warden and I wasn't. And uh, years went by and we worked together. I was a park ranger and, and I helped him some and he helped me some. And uh, we developed a good, a good strong bond, a good strong friendship. and. And uh, he's retired now, so I used to get to work with him there. I, I got on as a game warden. He helped me, I'll just tell you. Kind of gave me some pointers. And uh, he's retired now and has been for the last few years. And this is where we get together and right. have and, and, right. and keep our friendship strong and visit right. and talk about family and, and, and good things like that. So that's what we do besides just the rabbit hunting. I've got a young swamp rabbit out of Eastern Oklahoma. He's been running through the uh, water this morning. He's got a lot of water on him. If Jim and I had, in modern terminology, a USB cord to plug into each other, we'd exchange uh, lots of information the time we're together. A lot of people don't know or don't have this camaraderie or have a common goal that we do things together. And maybe they do something different, I'm not sure. And that's how it all works. They're hot on the trail. Maybe he'll circle again. If he does, maybe we'll get him this time. I would like more people to rabbit hunt. Uh, at the same time, it's competition. Uh, and, and you know, people get into your spots you like to hunt, your favorite spots. But it's such a good, I think it's a good, clean sport I smooth missed that first shot. <laughs> we'll let the dogs find it. That way they know it's done.
You don't have to kill a rabbit every time you go. You don't have to kill a rabbit every fifth time you go. You can go and enjoy the product that you've produced. You can breed your dogs, raise puppies, train them. A lot of enjoyment comes in, in training puppies and watching them develop and watching them learn how to, to operate like their mom and dad did. Good dogs. Good dogs. Good dogs. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. There's your swamp rabbit. About a six pounder, five and a half, six pound rabbit. Not too many of those left in a lot of the state of Oklahoma. There's still some down here in southeastern Oklahoma. Anyway, dogs did good. I didn't shoot as good as I should have, but anyway, we got us one. There he is, Sassy. I, it's just fulfilling to me to get to do that, and I think it would be for others too. I, I, I wish more people did. Good girl, that's old Dan. How y'all doing, huh? Oh, you finally got that old rascally rabbit right up here. No, Jim finally shot it for you. He's a good boy. Hello there. Hello there, Spot. You're a good girl. You good rabbit dog. You good rabbit dog. And uh, you don't always have to shoot a rabbit. We don't shoot rabbits all the time, but we did today. It's a good. It's a good thing to do once in a while. We take some home and and uh, we cook them up and we eat them and we like them. And uh, but the sport of running the dogs, I think, is what uh, convinces us that that we should hit the woods with our beagles and and it, it gives us a, a motivation to get out and move around and get a little exercise and enjoy the great outdoors of Oklahoma. Yes, and uh, what else could you do on a day like today rather than get outside and get some exercise like a 74 year old man that I am, what motivation would you have to get out and get exercise with rabbit hunting? Good dog, good dog. And the dogs like to see and smell what they've been chasing Good dog. Even Sassy, maybe she'll learn her collar today. Well, I don't know. We might give her another time or two. <laughs> All right. You ready to load him up, Jim? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, load him up, Joe. Yep. On to the next one. See if we can get another started. Laverne, what are you doing? She's running her daddy. Welcome to the ODWC Test Kitchen. My name is Smokey Solis, and today we're gonna make barbecue swamp rabbit quesadillas. So thanks to some of our ODWC family, we were donated this giant swamp rabbit here. I smooth missed that first shot. <laughs> Now today, I'm going to freestyle this recipe, and I'm just gonna use some ingredients that we had in the kitchen already, so uh, let's get to it. All right, so first off, to uh, get this rabbit started, we're going to make a really quick barbecue sauce. It's really simple, um, and we're gonna slather the rabbit in it to throw it on the grill in just a few minutes. So uh, first off, just gonna grab your ketchup, and obviously, depending on how much barbecue sauce you want, depends on how much of this ketchup you're going to use. I'm going to make quite a bit here. And then inside with the ketchup, I'm just going to add uh, probably about a half a cup of this brown sugar here. I'm going to add my water, and this, uh, this is about half a cup, but I'm going to add half. And we'll, we'll add as we go, just in case, um, to see how, how fast or uh, how thick we want it. And then this is diced chipotle peppers um, in sauce. And this is something as well that I'm just gonna add or add to. You can always add more if you want later on, but it is pretty spicy, so we don't wanna hurt anybody. Uh, this is onion powder. Just a little bit. Some paprika. Give a little smoky taste. Now there is salt in that ketchup, but I'm gonna add a little bit more here. A 
I'm gonna get a good, good little bit of pepper in there as well. <clears throat> and now we're just gonna stir this all together, mix it up good, and just let this reduce and get warm to add to the rabbit to put on the grill. All right, so we got this rabbit all slathered up with that homemade barbecue sauce. So now we're just gonna throw it on the grill. All right, so now that we've got that rabbit on the grill, we're just going to make sure that we keep putting some barbecue sauce on there until it reaches around 160 degrees. We're gonna pull it off and uh, take it back inside. All right, so we finished up cooking that rabbit. As you can see here, looks great. You can eat it just like that right off the bone if you'd like, but we've got some of that meat chopped up here in this bowl. And now we're just gonna take some of this rabbit meat here and put it into this quesadilla, like so. Seems like a good bit. And we're just gonna add a little more cheese into this. I'm using a Mexican blend and also some mozzarella. So let's fold this over. Now this quesadilla is packed full of greatness. Just gonna move on over to the pan. Make sure it doesn't open up on you. Just press down so it has some good surface contact on the pan. You can use the spatula to do that as well. All right, now that we pulled this sucker out of the pan, let's get it and taste it. Now we can use whatever toppings we want. I'm just gonna try it as is. That's the best thing I've had all day. So good. Go ahead and give this a shot, guys. It's really good, and it's definitely gonna hit the spot. Good. There's quite a bunch of bass in this pond. Mm -hmm. We hadn't ever fished in this pond. Yeah. Heard a lot about, about it. it. Yeah, but seen anything. I don't, it's the first time to ever fish. It's like it's a pretty nice pond. It's good and clear. It's got nice bass in it. It's got some pretty good sized bass in it. It's got some big ones in it too. Yeah. I mean that one hit right at the edge of the water. Yeah I've had two do that to me. Kind of unexpected. It, I mean it took and hit it hard. As soon as it hit, it started running with it. Oh, just missed one, Ty. Yeah. Mm. Just missed it. Oh, I'm up in this tree here. It's a big one, man. Gosh. God, come on in, man. Come on. You're the biggest fish I've ever saw in my life. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh man! Oh my gosh! Ty! Look at the size of this fish! Look at this fish! Look at this fish! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh! 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 It's a big one! Oh my gosh! Oh! Oh! Oh, it's big! It's big! Oh my gosh! Stop! Stop! Don't go in! Oh man! Oh! Oh man! Oh my gosh! This is the biggest fish I've ever saw in my life! Oh my gosh! This is a big fish! Can I keep him? Please! Oh my gosh!
Oh, man. Man, he hit and I couldn't get him in. He was just, he was fighting bad. He's about five, man. He's got to be. We got another big one, man. Oh, no, that ain't as big as that last one. I'm staying with this one. Let's do one more cast and let's head on home, okay? There it goes. Let's go get us some dinner. I'm getting, I'm getting hungry. Some baseball practice wore me out. Okay? Yeah. That sure was a nice fish you caught today, Zach. Thanks, man. You caught a nice one, too, man. That was a big old fish that you caught. I know. Hey, me and you, at least caught two big ones. Okay, last cast. Hey, me help. I mean, big bugs had fun today. Yeah, you too. When do you think we can come back to this pond? I don't know. But maybe we talk them into coming back someday. Yeah, that's a nice pond, man. Yeah, well, maybe we can talk them be in into bring us back tomorrow. Yeah. You forgot me. I don't want to. Record fish are good for more than just a whopping fish story. They can also give biologists an idea of Oklahoma's potential. The 2019 state record smallmouth buffalo not only expanded our knowledge of how large the fish can grow in our waters, but also expanded our knowledge of how long the species can live. The smallmouth buffalo is a native sucker fish and shares the family trait of having a downturned mouth. That makes them well suited to feed along the bottom of the stream or the river where they eat a variety of bottom dwelling animals and algae. As with many other long lived fish, the smallmouth buffalo have rapid growth in the early years. They won't reach maturity until several years after hatching and they can live decades after that. And the females typically grow larger and may mature later than males. Older and larger females can produce larger, higher quality eggs and larvae that have a greater chance of survival than smaller females. That means these older and larger females, well, they have a lot of influence in the population. For more information on Oklahoma's incredibly diverse species, check out our many resources at wildlifedepartment.com. There you can browse field guides, share wildlife sightings, and subscribe to The Wild Side, our monthly e-newsletter dedicated to non-game conservation efforts. Well, we hope today's stories remind you that Oklahoma is a perfect state to explore. So however you choose to enjoy our state's incredible natural world, remember, your adventure starts with Outdoor Oklahoma. Where's the siren? Can I push the siren? Just don't hit that one right there. Outdoor Oklahoma is produced by the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation and is proud to serve and be funded entirely by sportsmen and women and outdoor enthusiasts who love and appreciate all things wild in the great state of Oklahoma. <laughs>